Hello and welcome to this very special episode of the AutoCar Professional Dialogue. With me, we ha I have Dr. Elmar Degenhardt, the CEO of Continental uh, GAG. Uh, Dr. Degenhardt, uh, thank you for talking to AutoCar Professional. And uh, we got a very good glimpse of the future of mobility and how the way Continental, a global supplier, sees it. Uh, electrification, connectivity, connected car, and autonomous driving. These three are the I mean, also the mega trends of the industry, but I guess you are putting a lot of, you're betting very big on these three mega trends, aren't you? That's correct, yes. I think we are well positioned in all three areas. Um, we know relatively well what will happen uh, at the side of uh, assisted autonomous driving in the next uh, five, six, seven years, because we are living in the middle of uh, this whole scenario already. Um, assisted systems we are using daily uh, in high volumes at the road. Um, we are generating sales of 1.2 billion with uh, sensors for assisted driving already. will go up to far beyond 2 billion by 2020. This is the fastest growing product segment in our, in our company. And assisted driving helps to reduce fatalities and accidents significantly in the next years. Uh, we have still 1.3 billion, million, sorry, million fatalities at the road in the world, and uh, we have to bring this number into the in, to the direction of, of zero, and this is possible with today's technologies. Right, and also uh, talking about electrification, uh, do you see electrification as the absolute future of the automotive industry, or are there still some grey areas whether electrification will become a mainstream propulsion technology of the automotive industry for all stakeholders to, be, you know, to invest in it now? Or, uh, or should some still wait for some time, maybe another five years or so, to take a call whether electric mobility will be a mainstream propulsion technology? Electrification will play a major role in the industry in the future. Um, we have to make combustion type technology clean to be able to fulfill the regulations, not only for 2020, but also for uh, the time afterwards. So, um, because electrified vehicles will be available with affordable technology, not before 2024, 2025 timeframe, we need a kind of a bridge technology in between. Mm -hmm. And these are the hybrid vehicles, right. where we combine the advantage of uh, electric drive trains at a small scale, with combustion type uh, of engines. Mm. Uh, mild hybrid <coughs> systems, 48 volt, mm. full blown hybrid systems, um, uh, high voltage systems for heavy vehicles. Right. Um, why do I say that high volumes of electrified, pure electrified vehicles will most probably not kick in before 24, 25 time frame? Because the battery cell technology which we have today, li lithium ion based, uh, has not the energy density which we need to uh, bring volume of the battery, uh, weight of the battery, and especially also costs of the battery right. to a reasonable, affordable level. Right. Probably we need another technology step. Probably we will move towards what we call solid state technology, um, where we have a solid electrolyte in uh, no longer liquid, liquid one. And uh, all the experts are saying that uh, this technology most probably will not be available before 23, 24 time frame. And also, uh, like what we can gather from talking to various OEMs, it says all stakeholders have to pitch in to bring the cost down for the electric uh, vehicle because that's one of the hurdles. The acquisition cost that, uh, that the end consumer has to pay is still too high. And only reduction in battery cost will not help. So OEMs will have to kind of bring down cost uh, at the manufacturing end, uh, suppliers. So as a global tier one supplier, w you know, what role do you think, you know, how much uh, effort are you putting on you know, bringing down cost for technology or solutions that will go into electric vehicles? You're right, all, all kinds of systems have to make a contribution. Uh, for example, we have to reduce weight. We have to replace uh, metal parts, um, which we are using today, um, with, uh, with uh, plastic parts. Um, our contact division is doing this, for example. Um, we have to reduce the rolling resistance of uh, the tires significantly. Uh, our tire division is taking care on that. So um, 
we we have to make uh, multiple contributions to make um, driving more efficient uh, and to bring emissions down. But uh, to come back to your question, uh, we also believe that we should not only purely rely on combustion and uh, electric driving. Uh, there are other opportunities like uh, synthetic fuel, which uh, can be produced in a CO2 neutral way. Okay. Uh, still, the costs are too high, but we can also work on uh, manufacturing processes uh, to make um, synthetic fuel really competitive. I wouldn't leave uh, hydrogen completely out of the picture. Mm. Probably it takes longer to industrialize hydrogen um, to make it uh, competitive cost-wise than uh, electric drivetrains. This is probably a technology for 2030 or beyond, but uh, we should not stop working on these alternatives. Right, and also, I mean, uh, since uh, I, uh, uh, I mean, I rep represent India, I'd like to ask you about your, uh, what is the role of India that you see uh, playing in Continental's overall scheme of things and also in terms of artificial intelligence. As I understand, your India Tech Center is playing a key role in development. So could you briefly tell us about the role that India is going to play uh, for Continental, not only as a market, but also as a development hub, for engineering hub? You're absolutely right. Um, the interests are twofold. It's a highly interested market, and uh, we have uh, production facilities in India and uh, we believe that India can uh, be the next growth engine for the automotive industry uh, once growth rates naturally are coming down in China. That would be a fantastic perspective uh, for not only the automotive industry. Um, India has a, has a very high quality educational system and um, a big number of talents are leaving the universities each year. So we are using, and this is the second pillar uh, in India of Continental, we are using India as, a, as an R&D hub intensively. Um, we have more than 2,000 uh, software engineers in India already, and the number is continuously growing. Um, people coming from the university, they have uh, also um, artificial intelligence competence, so I could imagine that uh, India is developing into an artificial intelligence competence hub for Continental in the future. And lastly, if I were to uh, ask you to do some crystal ball gazing for the global automotive industry, uh, with a little bit focus on emerging markets like India, in the say, say about in the horizon of 2025 or so, mm -hmm. how do you see the industry in terms of mobility, in terms of you know, supply chain or manufacturing? Overall, in the automotive industry, how do you see it? Well, it's an exciting uh, industry to work in. Um, you mentioned electrification, autonomous driving, um, connectivity. These developments, they are all materializing in parallel. Um, cars will look really different in 10 years from now compared to today. Uh, the cities are changing. We will see shared mobility concepts in, in big cities, and India has big cities. So. Um, to be able to make a contribution to more intelligent, to smarter, to cleaner driving for the sake of the whole society is a, is a great thing to do. All right. Dr. Elmer Degenhardt, thank Thanks you very much lot. for talking thank to Autocar Professional. Uh, it's a pleasure meeting you. And thank you very much for watching this episode of the Autocar Professional Dialogue. Do keep following us on social media, on our website, www.autocarpro.in, and of course, our fortnightly magazine, Autocar Professional. Thank you very much. Goodbye.